Priscilla here. I am about ready to head out for On Top down at the Standard Hotel. Suzanne Barsh's big opening night, May 14th, 2019. And we're going to be meeting up with Ernie Glam and with Periodical and a few other people. And we're going to go out and have some fun tonight. All right. Hope to see you there. What's that? Nope. So I'm out on 10th Avenue, and look who I ran into. Hey, Perry, how we doing? Uh, Perry doesn't say much. It's Tuesday night, the beginning of On Top season. Who the fuck knows? I've lost count. Too many cocktails, too many lines. Uh, just hanging out, uh, ready to have a great time. Yeah? Let's do a close up. Fun. Hey, where the hell's the lens? The lens I'm supposed to be staring into the... Right there. Yes, that's exactly. Stare into the light. Please stare into the light. Don't we look so, fabulous? Yeah, we do. We actually look amazing. Keep my damn mouth shut. Alright, All right. one, two, three. Welcome to the Pew! It's a nocturnal edition. Long time no see. Yeah, I know. It's been a while. I don't think I've gone out with Priscilla in months. I think the last time that we were out together was in May, a few months ago. Okay, so I was telling a periodical that when we were driving here that I don't think we've been to a club in Manhattan in months because the last time we could remember coming to a Manhattan club was when Suzanne did her Valentine's Day party here in February and now wow. it's okay, May. Yeah. Yeah, now it's May and spring is here and it's cold as hell. It's, it's fucking cold. 45 degrees outside and it's, And that was the high. It's raining and um, if people may recognize um, when they see us this time they're going to be seeing us in beautiful 720 low depth. give you a totally different look at the clubs tonight. I hope you enjoy it. Waiting for the elevator. Yeah. And shivering with anticipation. <laughs> it's so cold, I'm wearing velvet. I know, it's like I have a picture, guys. Oh, yeah, sure. Hey. Tell me your names. Angelina. Great. Oh. Here you go. Just one of you, okay? You're all named Angelina. Okay, good. I'm Angelina. I'm Angelina. Great. Sure, sure. 
Bruce. How have you been? Wonderful. How are you? Doing good. Doing good. Doing good. Doing good. So we're shooting old school style with an old 8 millimeter camera. Oh, I so love we're getting it. some interesting footage. And uh, so tell me about your work. What are you doing tonight? Well, I just did a performance. I performed at the Stonewall for the first time, and it was amazing. Cool. Get a spin. Awesome. Thank you. Yes, of course. Makeup, or you have like a, a hood on your head, right? So yeah, I've got usually like kind of oh natural. Right, I have like 50 more things going on today. I just have about 20 sheets of um, polyurethane, but outside of that, it's not too complicated. So, what is your look tonight? Uh, I was just practicing on some armor to be quite honest. It's just some kind of old fashioned uh, armor design that I just kind of wanted to play with and get right because I'm working on a larger project. So I, I love armor and medieval armor, so it's just fun to it's fun to learn how to do it actually. So here, here is I am. it hard? Yeah, it's well yeah, this is on um, polyurethane. It's like physically very hard. But and you to, have to put it in the oven to shape it? No, I heat it. You heat it with like a heat gun and just like hardware materials and stuff. You know, it's like riveted. Um, 
but it, it was it was really it was lovely to, to it was a lovely project to take on. And then you combined it with a, a, a fancy dress. Right. I just I was thinking of doing it with the tuxedo, but I was like, no, nah, I was just feeling a dress. It's raining outside, so I just didn't want to do anything like too like you know insane. I just wanted to be comfortable and happy. Yeah, this is as close as I get to comfortable. Yeah, tonight's weather is not conducive to, like, to anything. An elaborate right, no, no, it's so fucking cold. You're just gonna melt. So I mean, it'd be cute to do like a thong or something because it's raining and it, you know a thong and an umbrella next time. Muffinhead, give a little turn so that people can see you. The legendary Muffinhead, live and on top. All right, we're here with yeah. Victoria. Uh, what is your last name, Victoria? Victoria Precise. Like Victoria the Precise. What are you precise about? About everything I do, the makeup, the look, the way I move with other people on the floor. Well, it's precisely yeah. executed. So what's your inspiration tonight? It's really fun. Thank you. Uh, well, my slogan is aspiring psychologist, practicing psychotic. So, you know, I got my straight jacket, just got out the asylum, got my syringes, and it's a whole fiasco of psychotic break. So you could actually give me therapy and drive me crazy at the same time. At the same time. Right. They call that manipulation usually, but... <laughs> well, your outfit, you've got a straight jacket, and are those syringes in your head? Yes. Bundes of syringes, 10 cc each. Of what, Adderall? Well, heroin. I'm in recovery. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> hey, I don't judge. <laughs> Shout out to all the methadone users. Yeah, out there. shout out. I'm from the Hudson Valley. Yeah, I'm relapsed. I'm the mother of the House of Peculiar in the Hudson Valley. Oh, really? Yeah. What part of the Hudson Valley? New Falls and Kingston. Oh, okay. I yeah. never make it up that far up because I work in Westchester and that's about as far into the Hudson Valley. Oh, you got to travel up a bit, a 40, 40 more minutes. Yeah. And so you'll run into some good bodies. Kingston's kind of far, yeah. Yeah. That's near New Falls, right? It is. That's where I live and go to school. Oh, okay. At yeah. SUNY New Falls? Yes. Oh, what do you study? Psychology and okay. counseling. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> Have you helped anybody yet? I do help a lot of people. Okay. I help a lot of people dress like this too. You yeah. never believe. It's fun, fun. <laughs> well, you know, that's, fun. that's part of the uh, Hudson Valley is very bucolic. And it's not the type of place that you normally see people walking around dressed like this. You wouldn't until about four years ago we started the parties and we got a lot of people interested in the art of drag and all these local artists started coming out dressing like this, turning shows. So now it's a really prominent feature of the Hudson Valley. Oh really? What's the best club to go to in the Hudson Valley for this? Um, we do shows at BSP in Kingston, Backstage Productions, uh, Bar 49 in Poughkeepsie. We're with a bunch of centers, LGBTQ centers in Newburgh and Kingston as well. Well, thank you. So you heard it. Like, you can go to the Hudson yeah. Valley and be sort of fierce drag. Yes. And if you like what you see, catch me on Instagram. Well, yeah, shout out your yes. Instagram. Victoria, period. I, period, precise. Victoria, precise. Yes. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. It was a pleasure. Yes. Ah. All right, so we're on the rooftop at On Top, and I'm with Flo, who's got like a really cute outfit on tonight. He's got a little Thank sexy you. corset, clown uh -huh. number. And these shoes. Fabulous. So what's your inspiration for tonight? Um, well, this is actually my first thing that I ever made, was this hat. Oh, okay. Uh, about like five years ago. So it's the first uh, night of On Top. I feel like, you know, it represents kind of a new new beginnings and I'm kind of going through a change in my life right now so it just kind of made sense to him homage to the whole clown stuff as well. Well, considering that that's your first hat you ever made, it's really held up well if it's been around for I five mean, years. Yeah, things fall apart and I glue it back together so okay. yeah. I don't lend it out anymore because of that. <laughs> Alright, how many times do you think you've worn it since you first made it? Oh man. Um, 30 to 40 maybe? Oh, okay. yeah. Did you make any of your other, the rest of your outfit? I mean, just the collar. Okay, uh, Yeah, everything else I put together. So you said you do drag too? Yes. What kind of drag? Um, so I'm based out of Queens, so I, I don't feel it's a little bit different than Brooklyn drag, different than Manhattan drag. It's kind of like conceptual, uh, more similar to Brooklyn drag, I guess. Um, I like to talk about being a person of color um, and address those things, women's rights in my drag. I like to be stupid and be a clown and do handstands and whatever else too, so a little bit of everything. What clubs do you perform at? 
I'm kind of all over, but I dance at House of Yes, and um, there's a party called Homecoming at Bar 9 in Hell's Kitchen, where a bunch of dodgeball drag queen <laughs> perform. Dodgeball drag queen? Yes, I'm in, a, I'm in a gay dodgeball league, and there are about a, a dozen of us that do drag now from the league. Is that still a thing, dodgeball? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been doing it for like 10 years, and it's, it's like still going. It's very ever. strong, yeah. It sells out, like to get in, it sells out within like an hour. I can't believe that. Yeah. Wow. Okay, yeah. You know, I always hated sports, so... Well, that, I, I think, think I would put dodgeball in that category of sports. We're right. all reclaiming right, right. dodgeball have, with right, moments right. of and I totally, torture and trauma. I totally get that, yeah. I'm too traumatized. I'm too far gone. <laughs> I'll never like dodgeball or any other sport. <laughs> I've just accepted that. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. You yeah, can just I'll, come and join. I'll and just, just wear makeup. Yeah, know? wear makeup, <laughs> be one of the drag queens, and then, like, go out to the bars afterwards. Right, well that sounds like fun though. Yeah. So is it really like playing dodgeball or are you guys just all keep peeing? Uh, it's a little bit of both. There are definitely some people that take it very seriously and don't do the keep pee part and then the other way around. I'd like to say I'm somewhere in the middle but and but like extreme as well. So I'm pretty good because um, I've been doing it for so long but I really like to have a good time. Like that's why it's dodgeball and that's why I chose it rather than okay. football yeah. or something. Yeah. Right. Like one of the things that turned me off about sports is that people would be so into like winning that it, it wouldn't be fun to me. Some people are, yeah. You know, and that's and kind of a buzzkill. That would but kind of ruin it for me. Yeah. I just don't let it bother me, basically. Do you like to win? I mean, yeah, who doesn't like to win? But, you know, I don't mind losing if it makes the person I'm dealing with, like, happier. Right. Okay. <laughs> well, that's lovely. All right. Flow. And on top. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Uh, Glowjob.queen. And now a word from our sponsor. because we really love your outfit tonight. Can you tell us a little bit about your inspiration? Sure. Um, do you know the store Gothic Renaissance? Yes. Yeah, so I was shopping there one day and I saw this beautiful headpiece and I was like, I must have it. It reminds me of death, but it's so beautiful and graceful. And so I wanted to do something that was like Siren of the Sea going to high tea with the Queen of Jordan, maybe. And so it's like Gaga, it's Mermaid. It's ethereal, it's dark. Um, yeah, that's what I was kind of going So you built your whole outfit around your headpiece? I did. I built the whole outfit around the headpiece and the makeup. I wanted it to look like I was drinking my own tears, which is always a fun moment. Yeah, I've actually done that. You have? Love that. <laughs> Especially in the winter when you're walking it's really cold and they're like streaking down your face because your eyes can't handle the cold. We love the drama. You just kind of lift them. Yeah, just natural Perfect. tears. You don't even need to draw them on. <laughs> right, yeah. I'm not even, I'm not even yeah. upset about anything. I'm just crying <laughs> uncontrollably because it was cold. Yeah. So, uh, what do you do in the daytime? I actually work in gay porn. I'm a screenwriter for a company called Charge Media. And we make fun little videos. And, uh, yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> well, a lot of people wouldn't think that there's actually, like, a script or a screen. I didn't think there was a script porn. until I was hired, girl. <laughs> and I was like, how much of it is scripted? Everything is scripted. And along with gifts of every little moment. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't have thought that. Yeah, me neither, but you know, you learn something new every day. <laughs> Do you get to uh, fluff any of the porn stars you work with? Um, what does fluff mean? Sorry, part of it. Like when they're not when they're not hard and they have to get hard. Oh, oh, like a fluff. Okay, like a fl yeah. Um, no, that's not my job. Maybe that. Maybe I'm doing it unintentionally. <laughs> I don't know. So you know, a lot of times I, when I watch porn, I feel like I can tell what's coming next. So yeah. is there some type of uh, 
like pattern that you all are using for screenplays? Well, every single one of our sites um, have like a formula and we try to adhere to that because it's what our fans want. So it's all about kind of like pleasing your audience and knowing your audience and knowing what kind of porn they want to watch, you know, what kind of dynamic they're into. Like Family Dick, for example, it's always going to be daddy son, like that's the vibe, that's what we're going to give you. And it's going to be a little bit creepy and it's going to be a little bit um, realistic. So yeah. <laughs> you, you said that earlier that you change your looks a lot, so uh, you're, not, you're not wedded to one style? No, I love pulling up to the club and like not being recognized by people I know. Yeah. They're like, oh bitch, I didn't even realize that was you. <laughs> and that's the funnest part of it, you know, just being able to transform and like be a different person and get away from that day job that we're both talking about right. that I hate so much, waking early up for. Up yeah, early for. Some might <laughs> say that's the ultimate compliment when you're dressed up at a club and people Yes, yeah, totally. I don't want to be the bitch I am during the daytime. She is not glamorous. <laughs> I want to be feeding you these vibes all the time. <laughs> Well, I guess um, writing screenplays for porn has its downsides. I'm not, I'm not sure what they are, but... Um, you get desensitized, so watching porn is not fun anymore at all. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that's one of them. And, um, you know, it's a lot of work. You have to mentally compartmentalize and be ready to do that every day. And take it seriously as a job. I feel like a lot of people would struggle taking it seriously. Uh, possibly, yeah. I mean, I guess I'd have to wrap my head around it too. <laughs> yeah, right. literally. Yeah, wrap quite literally. around it. <laughs> <laughs> so we're with Ethan Cooch on the roof of On Top. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>
Welcome back. Nine through. Welcome back. Welcome back to our top. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Well, what did you think? It was really good. No one got arrested. Um, no one felt me up, at least none that I'll talk about. Uh, how was it for you? Uh, I did get felt up a couple of times, but that's part for the car set on top. Um, I didn't. I left earlier than I wanted to. I actually have to work tomorrow, so I would have stayed longer and uh, partied harder if I didn't have to work. You know, my job always gets in the way of a good time. That's true. Well, me and my Bratz girls are going to be heading off for a grinder date, and we'll catch you all later on. Bye.